1987, a team of geneticists made a discovery so disturbing, so impossible, that it shattered everything we thought we knew about human history. Rebecca Kahn, Mark Stoneking, and Alan Wilson were studying our DNA, expecting to find the rich genetic diversity you'd see in any successful species. Instead, they found something that should have been impossible. Humans, all 8 billion of us, have less genetic diversity than a single troop of chimpanzees. We are, genetically speaking, more like a single extended family than a globally diverse species. The implications were terrifying. At some point in our recent past, humanity was reduced to a population so small, so catastrophically decimated, that we barely escaped extinction. But here's where the story gets disturbing. The genetic evidence suggests this wasn't just any mass extinction. A natural catastrophe had eliminated almost everyone, leaving behind only a handful of survivors. And these survivors, they weren't random. They were the ones who were already different, already advanced, already equipped with cognitive tools that would determine the fate of our entire species. Welcome to humanity's greatest cold case. The crime scene, planet Earth, 74,000 years ago. The victims, every human population except one. The survivors, a tiny group who would go on to replace every other human species on the planet. This is the story they've never told you. This is the extinction event that didn't create modern humans, it cleared the world for them. But how do you investigate a crime that happened 74,000 years ago? How do you find evidence when your crime scene is an entire planet and your witnesses are long dead? The answer lies in the most sophisticated forensic tool ever developed, your own DNA. Every human carries in their cells a genetic timestamp, a record of every major event their ancestors survived. When populations crash, they leave specific signatures in our DNA, bottleneck events, founder effects, genetic drift patterns that can be read like fingerprints at a crime scene. The genetic pattern is so stark, it's as if someone pressed a reset button on humanity. The numbers are staggering. Chimpanzees who never left Africa have over 10 times more genetic diversity than all humans combined. Gorillas have 15 times more. We're talking about a species that was reduced to numbers so small that finding a mate would have been a life or death challenge. But the most disturbing part? This wasn't gradual. The genetic signatures suggest this population crash happened suddenly, violently, and recently. Something catastrophic eliminated over 90% of all humans in what appears to be a matter of decades. The question that haunted geneticists was simple. What kind of event could cause such massive, instantaneous devastation? The answer would take them to a crime scene in Indonesia, where the evidence of humanity's near extinction was buried under 20 feet of volcanic ash. Lake Toba looks peaceful today. Tourists take boat rides across its pristine waters, never suspecting they're floating above humanity's greatest crime scene. Because 74,000 years ago, this wasn't a lake. It was the mouth of hell. Mount Toba wasn't just a volcano, it was a super volcano. When it erupted, it didn't just explode. It literally ripped a hole in the Earth's crust 60 miles wide. The explosion was heard on the other side of the planet. But here's what makes this discovery so chilling. Geologists have found Toba's ash signature everywhere. In Africa, in India, in China, in Greenland ice cores. This wasn't a regional disaster, it was a global apocalypse. Dr. Michael Rampino from NYU calculated the effects. The Toba eruption would have ejected more ash and sulfur dioxide into the atmosphere than every nuclear weapon on Earth detonated simultaneously. It created a volcanic winter that lasted at least six years, possibly decades. Global temperatures plummeted by 10 to 15 degrees Celsius. In some regions, summer temperatures dropped below freezing. Most plants died, most animals starved, and most humans simply vanished from the fossil record. But here's the crucial part that changes everything. While most human populations disappeared, some didn't just survive, they thrived. The genetic evidence suggests human population crashed from millions to fewer than 10,000 individuals globally. But these survivors weren't scattered randomly across the planet. They were concentrated in specific locations, and they shared one critical advantage that would change 
everything. And that's where our investigation takes its most fascinating turn. Because the humans who survived this apocalypse weren't just lucky. The evidence suggests they were already different, already advanced, already possessing cognitive abilities that other human populations lacked. Pinnacle Point, South Africa. A series of coastal caves that, 74,000 years ago, became humanity's secret refuge for survival. But here's what makes this discovery revolutionary. While the volcanic winter raged above, the inhabitants of these caves weren't just surviving, they were already living like modern humans. Dr. Curtis Moran's excavations revealed something extraordinary. Tools so advanced, so sophisticated, they represent a quantum leap in human technological capability. Heat-treated stone blades. Composite projectile points. Systematic ochre processing for symbolic behavior. But the real breakthrough came from studying their diet. These survivors had already cracked a code that no other humans had managed. Systematic marine foraging. They were harvesting shellfish, reading tide patterns, and exploiting coastal resources with a level of planning and foresight that demonstrates advanced cognitive abilities. The ochre processing is particularly telling. They were grinding iron-rich rocks to create pigments not for toolmaking, but for symbolic purposes. Body painting, cave art, abstract thinking. This is evidence of what archaeologists call behaviorally modern human capabilities. Here's the game-changing revelation. All of this advanced behavior at Pinnacle Point predates the Toba eruption. These people weren't transformed by the catastrophe, they were prepared for it. Here's where genetics confirms the archaeological evidence. The highest genetic diversity in modern humans is found in the Khoisan populations of southern Africa. These people are quite literally our closest genetic relatives to the Toba survivors. They carry in their DNA the signatures of that original population. The genetic evidence shows what happened next. These cognitively advanced survivors began expanding, first across Africa, then into the Middle East, then across the entire planet. And wherever they went, other human species began disappearing. Which brings us to the most controversial part of our investigation. Because when these advanced humans encountered Neanderthals and Denisovan species that had successfully inhabited Europe and Asia for hundreds of thousands of years, something happened that defies every explanation except one. The Neanderthals were incredible. Stronger than us. Larger brains than us. Better adapted to European climates. They'd survived ice ages, climate changes, and volcanic winters for over 300,000 years. They were the ultimate survivors. The Denisovans were equally impressive. Genetic evidence suggests they inhabited vast territories across Asia, from Siberia to the Pacific Islands. They had high-altitude adaptations that allowed them to thrive in regions where modern humans struggle even today. Yet within 20,000 years of our ancestors' arrival in Europe and Asia, both species were extinct, not absorbed, not gradually outcompeted through slow processes, replaced through a complex process of resource competition and demographic pressure. The archaeological record tells a fascinating story. Neanderthal sites show continuous habitation for millennia. Then within centuries, modern human sites appear in the same prime locations. This represents rapid demographic replacement driven by superior adaptive capabilities. Dr. Svante Peebo's groundbreaking analysis of Neanderthal DNA revealed something crucial. Significant interbreeding did occur between modern humans and other human species. We carry 2 to 4% Neanderthal DNA, and some populations carry substantial Denisovan ancestry. This shows that replacement wasn't through warfare, but through demographic and technological advantages. The technological evidence provides a clue to how this happened. Post-Toba humans arrived in Europe and Asia with projectile weapons, spear throwers, bow and arrows that could kill from a distance. Neanderthals relied on close contact hunting weapons. In resource competition, technology wins. But the most significant advantage wasn't physical, it was cognitive. These advanced humans showed unprecedented levels of symbolic thinking, social organization, and cultural transmission. They could coordinate large group activities, share complex information across generations, 
and adapt rapidly to new environments. The genetic evidence shows wave after wave of expansion from the post-Toba population. They didn't just spread randomly, they moved with purpose, following optimal routes, establishing settlements in the most resource-rich areas, systematically occupying every ecological niche. But here's what makes this story truly remarkable. The evidence suggests Toba didn't create these superior humans. It acted as a massive selective filter that cleared the world of every human population except the ones who were already cognitively advanced. Look around you. Every human face you see, regardless of continent, culture, or ethnicity, carries the genetic signature of those Toba survivors. We are all descendants of the tiny population that emerged from places like the South African caves 74,000 years ago. But here's the twist. We didn't just survive the bottleneck. We inherited the advanced cognitive toolkit that made survival possible in the first place. Think about it. No other species has ever dominated the planet like humans have. No other species has developed technology, art, complex language, and civilization. What makes us unique isn't that we suddenly became smart after Toba. It's that the humans who were already smart were the only ones left standing. One controversial theory, proposed by Dr. Richard Klein from Stanford, suggests that the post-Toba archaeological record shows signs of a neural mutation, a rapid change in brain structure that enhanced cognitive abilities. However, this theory is highly debated, and many scientists believe cognitive advancement was more gradual. The archaeological record shows this clearly. The explosion of human cultural complexity, art, music, sophisticated tools, symbolic behavior was already present in populations like Pinnacle Point before Toba. The catastrophe didn't create these abilities. It eliminated every human group that lacked them. But the most compelling evidence comes from studying modern human populations. Despite having spread across the entire planet, colonizing every continent and climate zone, we remain genetically almost identical. That's not normal evolutionary behavior, that's the signature of a recently bottlenecked population that underwent rapid expansion. To put this in perspective, there's more genetic diversity in a single population of chimpanzees in West Africa than in all humans combined. We're essentially a single extended family that happened to take over the world. And those percentages of Neanderthal and Denisovan DNA we carry, they're evidence of the interbreeding events that occurred during our expansion when small groups of other human species were incorporated into the expanding cognitively advanced population. The genetic evidence shows we went from near extinction to global domination in less than 50,000 years. That's not gradual evolution, that's explosive expansion by a cognitively superior population that was already equipped with the tools for global success. Which brings us to the final, most disturbing question in our investigation. If this near-extinction event acted as a selective filter that eliminated every human population except the cognitively advanced ones, what does that tell us about what we really are? And more importantly, what happens when our species faces its next major selective pressure? The evidence is overwhelming. Humanity's genetic crime scene tells a story that textbooks have only recently begun to acknowledge. The evidence, 74,000 years ago, a supervolcanic eruption nearly wiped out all human life on Earth. But it didn't randomly eliminate populations, it acted as the most extreme intelligence test in natural history. The survivors who emerged from refuges like the South African caves weren't just lucky. They were already cognitively advanced, already behaviorally modern, already equipped with the technological and social innovations necessary for global expansion. These advanced humans then systematically replaced every other human species on the planet. Not through warfare, but through superior adaptive capabilities, better technology, better social organization, better cultural transmission of information. The result? A species that went from caves to cities in 70,000 years, from stone tools to space travel in a geological instant, from small tribal groups to a global civilization, of 8 billion individuals. We are not the product of slow, gradual evolution. We are the descendants of the cognitively elite survivors 
of the most extreme selective pressure in human history. We are, quite literally, the inheritors of an intellectual meritocracy forged by planetary catastrophe. The humans who entered the Toba bottleneck were not the same as those who emerged, not because they changed, but because only the most advanced survived. The genetic, archaeological, and technological evidence all point to the same conclusion. Modern humans represent the cognitive elite of our species, tested by the ultimate survival challenge. But here's the terrifying implication. If extreme environmental pressure could select for cognitive superiority once, it could happen again. Climate change, resource depletion, technological disruption, we may be approaching another evolutionary bottleneck. And this time, we won't have to wait for natural selection. We have genetic engineering, artificial intelligence, and biotechnology. We could potentially direct our own cognitive evolution. The question isn't whether humans will continue to evolve, it's whether we'll control that evolution, or whether it will be controlled by circumstances beyond our power. The genetic crime scene of humanity's near extinction has revealed the most important truth about our species. We are not just another animal that got lucky. We are the tested survivors of the ultimate intelligence filter. But you're not going to find this cutting-edge interpretation in any mainstream textbook. You're not going to see this covered on the evening news. This is the kind of advanced scientific understanding that challenges everything we've been taught about human evolution and our place in the natural order. The Toba catastrophe theory continues to evolve as new archaeological and genetic evidence emerges. What I've shown you today represents the latest scientific thinking about how a near extinction event shaped the cognitive landscape of our species. If this investigation into humanity's genetic crime scene has opened your eyes to the hidden truths of our species' past, then you need to see what comes next. Because what I've shown you today is just the beginning. The rabbit hole of human evolutionary mysteries goes much, much deeper. Hit that subscribe button right now and ring the notification bell, because in my next investigation, we're diving into what happened after these Toba survivors began rebuilding civilization. From the ashes of this near extinction, humanity rose again. But one group would go on to build something extraordinary, an empire so magnificent and advanced that for thousands of years, others have tried to claim credit for their achievements. But the DNA doesn't lie, and the genetic evidence reveals a truth that will shatter everything you think you know about ancient history. Don't let YouTube's algorithm bury these revelations. Share this video with someone who's ready to understand the true story of human cognitive evolution. Because once you realize that we're not the gradually evolved species we've been told we are, that we're actually the cognitive elite survivors of a planetary intelligence test, everything changes. The genetic evidence is clear. We are the descendants of the smartest humans who ever lived. And next time, we'll discover how these survivors used their superior intelligence to create something that still defies explanation today. The question isn't just what we inherited from our Toba ancestors, it's what they built that's been hidden from us for millennia. Thanks for watching.